Right, for the next two days, I am roaming Eurobike, the world's largest cycling trade fair, where a lot of new products from cycling and triathlon brands are leaked and teased and released, in fact. And I've actually got a really exciting bike tease coming in today's video, so stay tuned for that. But now, off to find some tech. Follow me. Well, this is an exciting one to start with because this is a first in the triathlon world. It's the first 3D printed triathlon saddle. It's actually a saddle that I love anyway. It's the Cell Italia Watt saddle that they designed in conjunction with Patrick Langer and a number of other pro athletes. But yeah, 3D printed. Now, not only does that mean that they can save a little bit of weight in doing so, they can also actually adjust the firmness in different parts of the saddle by 3D printing it. So they've actually got a little bit more firmer area at the front of the saddle and you can see the lattice structure of that 3d printing kind of opens out a little bit towards the back where obviously you're not going to be sat and that allows them to save a little bit of weight it's also double layered to improve that comfort there will be just obviously one production model and they've kind of taken an average across the board as to where the firmness should lie for everyone's preferences but in theory i guess they could also develop one-off saddles for particular pro athletes sadly probably not going to do it for your average joe like you and i but that's pretty cool they've got a kind of a, a grip strip on the front of the saddle here to stop you slipping and what i like is also a neat feature even underneath they've got this grip section which they have on the previous watt saddle allows you when you're hooking your saddle in the transition racking grips onto the bar and doesn't slip around they've also 3d printed that too it's me! I love this bike. Factor Hanzo. The forks up into the aero bars is one piece, meaning it sort of cuts through the stem, meaning that you've got to cut it to height. So if you get it wrong, that might be a bit annoying. Okay, I'm here at the Lumos stand with this helmet that you can display anything you like on the back of the helmet. Um, not sure who wrote this one. Ollie, you are dropped. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a pretty cool helmet. As I say, you can display anything you like on the back, you connect to it with an app. Um, pretty cool commuter helmet, and this is available for £189, I believe. Okay, so we've stepped away from the expo now and for a very good reason because well, this is incredibly exciting. Uh, not only are we in the first private bank in Germany, we're here to see something fascinating, incredibly exciting from BMC here. So you may remember last year, they released and showcased this bike at the Ironman World Championships in St. George when Patrick Nilsson rode this bike. Now, in pursuit of creating the fastest bike possible, they have collaborated with Red Bull and pulling upon their expertise in various different industries, including obviously F1. Now, one of the things I'm hearing from BMC here is it's not just about creating an aerodynamic and slippery bike. It's all about making the bike stable and its capabilities in the crosswinds and making sure that athletes can continue to lay down power when the wind is coming at them from different angles. So there are some notable differences between this bike and the previous Time Machine. You may remember we had sort of a part of the frame coming down here. They've got a much wider fork stance and you may have noticed little things like this, like a little thin kind of spoiler coming in between the fork. And this is all to help that crosswind stability. But that is not why we're here today because we've obviously already seen this bike at the Ironman World Championships last year. We've got some really exciting stuff to look at here. This is the bike we're here to talk about today. So this bike has actually been teased and leaked a little bit already. First ridden in the Tour Romandy. We've also seen a few triathletes riding on it. We had Christian Hogenhaug in Ironman Hamburg. We had Chris Lieferman in Boulder and Lucy Buckingham also riding it in Warsaw. So it is a UCI legal bike and also a triathlon bike. So there are a couple of things that I think they can change out here. So it looks like the bottle obviously would need to be changed to be UCI legal. And from what I understand, I think there is a bottle that's slightly smaller, would cut off around there and obviously you'd have to change the position somewhat. 
Now, this is still a prototype, hence the hashtag create speed on there. So I'm just kind of observing what's here and I don't know the full details as of yet, but obviously this bottle, it's a large bottle. It looks like a straw would come out of here. It would run on the outside of the frame, then cut into the frame. There's a little opening here and then it would pop out the top. Um, so nicely integrated, obviously fill on the go. We've got this storage unit on the back with a light built into it, which is pretty neat. We've got some similarity to the previous bike we were just talking about. We've got this wide stance on the fork, although it does look slightly deeper, and we've still got this fin section here. Uh, there is also, interestingly, this little thing on the top tube here. And obviously, in terms of aerodynamic properties, this is where they've worked really closely with Red Bull, and everything on this bike has been done for a reason. We've got this aerofoil shape on the forks and the rear stay here. We've got this kind of teardrop shape on the through axle, the bottom of the forks here. It's almost like the front hull of a ship, but it's all these little details, kind of got a cut in here. We've also got this offset profile here between the two faces. So again, clearly for a reason, and we've got this kind of fill-in for one bike setup, should you want to. But there is still yet another bike. As I said, this is the prototype. We've got a finished model through here. It's down here in the vault where they would have kept the gold back in the day. But unfortunately, it's locked away. We can't have a look at that just yet. You're just gonna have to stay tuned until September when they will be releasing it for the Ironman World Championships and then the bike will be available in November. So yeah, stay tuned. How do we get out of here? Guys? Guys? We also have a couple of new part tools at the park tool stand here. So we've got new bottom bracket tools here, specifically designed for ceramic bottom bracket bearings with uh, internal threads. We've also got these new bleed kits here, um, which got this very cool little rack uh, holding system. We also have internal routing kits that have been updated for the new Shimano group sets. Uh, we also have this new bike stand which I'm sure will interest a lot of people. And the idea or the development here on the previous bike stand is that this can be packed down even smaller, a more compact bike stand should you need to travel with it. We also have more over here. We also have a new handlebar holder. I don't know the specific name for it actually. So this is the previous one. We've also got this new one, which is kind of like a telescopic design, which apparently is really handy for bleeding brakes. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, and we've also got an update on some of their new cleaning tools. These are the Tempica, which apparently sheds oil. So these are the previous products here. They're still great, obviously, but over time, the oil will build up in there. It's very hard to remove it from there, whereas it drips off these, so you can keep these clean and keep using them for much longer. Now, I almost wandered straight past this funny looking glass box, and then I saw these wheels poking out of either end. I thought, I wonder if there's something interesting in there. And it appears there is, because I can just about see through the gap and this isn't a bike I've seen from Factor before. It's got a seat post that you seem to be able to cut to your desired height with a clamp on the top. I'm assuming it's the new Factor van. Maybe we will see it this year coming up to Tour de France with one of the pro teams. That's all I have on it so far, but pretty cool. Okay, just at the profile design stand now, and we have a couple of new products or modifications. So I've already actually featured and used these in the wind tunnel, in fact, the 43 ASC bars, which have this kind of ergonomic design. So it wraps around the forearm and the wrist area very nice. They've actually now developed a couple of different sizes. So we've now got these available in this shorter size for people with slightly shorter arms. So it'll fit them better, not only more comfortable, more aerodynamic. They also now have the 52 ASC coming, which is this one just here. It's a slightly different angle on it, hence the 52. Uh, but also with that, they've also increased the length of the hand grip by 20 mil. So you can actually then just cut it to the size should you want it to be shorter. So then more suited to perhaps people that are using the SRAM blips, which means that it's not quite as long as perhaps having the Shimano shifters on there. 
Also last year, you may remember if you watched our previous Eurobike videos that we featured the Airflow, which is this hydration system that clips onto the stem very neatly and kind of integrates into the frame. We understand that is now going to be available in the next couple or few months, so stay tuned for that. And then very quickly, we've got a couple of other little modifications with their Sonic Plus, the aluminium bars you can see here. So they've actually changed the shaping of the, the bars, so there's slightly more aerodynamic shaping to them. We're now at the looks down with their new TT bike, the 796 Mono Blade, which is obviously an update to their previous TT bike. Not just in aerodynamics, but also the stiffness and lightness using the ultra high modulus carbon. Updates to the profile and shape of the frame for those aerodynamic properties if include this nice bladed rear stay. They've also changed the shaping of the down tube here to now work with and fit around the bottle that would be coming off of there. They've also quite drastically changed the front end. So we've now got this very thin kind of bladed base bar that extends further forwards than most base bars I've ever seen before. Apparently this is something that they've worked on in collaboration with their Pro Tour team, Cofidis, something that they've been requesting. Coming up from that, for the aero bars, we've got this mono riser, which obviously can be adapted and changed depending on the spaces you use. You've then got this secondary kind of base coming off of that, which allows you to connect the base bars to that. That then again, you can add extra risers in. You can also change the angle or tilt of the aero bars. And we're not finished there because the aero bars can also be adapted and changed in there position and geometry so you can then actually extend the aero bars out further and the angle of the ends of those. But we're not finished there because we also have a new road bike from Look, it's the 795 Blade. This is an all-round road bike but one thing they have worked on quite particularly on this is the aerodynamic properties. So we've got this very thin rear stay here. We've also got a very, very aerodynamic cockpit to it. It almost looks like an integrated stem into a handlebar, but it is actually separate pieces. So you can actually unbolt it just down here and take the handlebars off. Very sleek, very cool. Again, worked in collaboration with Cofidis on this one, and they've got it to an astonishing seven kilograms in a size medium with pedals, bottle cage, compute amount on it, which is pretty unbelievable, isn't it? I was just passing by the Brighton stand and a couple of things have just caught my eye that I haven't seen before. So Brighton make GPS head unit devices for your bike. And what's caught my eye, well, firstly, is this group ride feature. So if you and your friends own a Brighton GPS head unit and create a group ride in their app and share it with all your friends who want to go on that group ride, you can then track one another and stay in touch through that group ride feature. You'll be able to see exactly where your friends are. So should you have that mate that's always 10 minutes late, you'd be able to see him arriving on your head unit on the map. And should you get disconnected during a ride, again, you'll be able to see exactly where all your friends are and obviously communicate through that, which is really cool. They've also got this rear view light system. So obviously that goes on the back of your bike it's a light so that you can be seen, but also it will detect any vehicles coming up behind you, alert you on the head unit and beep, and also flash on the rear light to alert the vehicle coming towards you. Okay, this one's a little bit different, uh, but I thought very relevant for you guys. So I stopped by the shock stand who specialize in making headphones. Now I'm wearing a set that actually I own myself and really enjoy. Now most of us are jumping on indoor trainers, treadmills, etc and trying to listen to music and we want a pair of headphones that are good sound quality and also sweat resistant water resistant so these are a very good option but also what's interesting about these is their bone conduction so you'll see that actually there's nothing going into my ear here so that's actually free i can hear what's going on outside but exceptional sound quality at the same time but with that, what that does mean, as you can see behind me, their slogan says, ride safe with sound on. You can actually theoretically use these out on the open road and hear the traffic whilst enjoying your music. Now, I'll put these down because they've actually also got an update or a new model as well. These ones are called the Open Fit. So you'll see here, these are just individual, I'm not gonna try and put them on, but individual headphones. And these actually sit closer to 
the ear. So these actually work through air conduction. Um, and again, exceptional quality. You can still hear outside sound, traffic and so on, but incredibly lightweight, also waterproof and look pretty cool. Now swinging by the Evox stand, a brand I love. I just think their stuff's so cool. And I noticed this, a hydration pack. This is the Hydro Pro 6. Apparently they did actually already have a Hydro Pro 3. I just didn't know that. So this is a running slash cycling pack. I mean, it's probably for cycling, but you could use it for running as well. Um, so this is a slightly larger volume, lots of cool storage. You can zip open the outside very easily and quickly. And obviously a straw coming around and you've got room for flasks and whatnot on the front. Might have to give this one a go myself. All right, no guesses where I am. Yes, I am at the core stand. Now core are known for their core body temperature devices, which we've featured here many times on the channel before. These little devices, which can attach to your heart rate strap, or they can also now be attached using these patches, which have been updated. They're much better. You can use them whilst running without a heart rate strap. So should you not want to, you can just attach this to your skin. You can also wear it swimming, and apparently they stay on very well. Now they've actually updated the core device or actually the app ever so slightly. So they've got a new feature called heat strain index that takes into account not only your core temperature, also your outside skin temperature and environmental conditions temperature. And you can kind of start to see where that tipping point for you is when it starts to really affect your core temperature. Of course, I am currently wearing this boiler suit because it's made by Core for heat adaptation. So you could use this on the turbo, maybe even running if you would like to put yourself through that much pain and start to get yourself adapted to heat training. Of course, these are used by numerous top athletes, the Norwegians in particular, we've seen them using a lot. And actually when they were doing their testing and creation of their suits for the Olympics and Kona and various things. And yeah, pretty cool stuff. If you're looking to do some heat training, check these guys out. Well, this one has absolutely stopped me in my tracks as I've been walking through the expo here. The company is called Roller. I would not expect you to have heard of it. I had not. Now they offer a training platform. Now they've got a couple of sort of parts to this. One is through their mobile app, which allows you to quite simply track your training, your health and so on, amongst many other metrics. But they've also got Roller World, which connects to that other part of the application. And you can see, I mean, it's incredibly well developed, incredible definition. It's like a lot of the other virtual training platforms, but I mean, the quality just looks exceptional. It's been in development for the last three years. It is available already. You can actually try it out for free at the moment. It will be launching officially at the end of the year. So you can connect up on your treadmill. You can get on there and run. You can get on there and cycle. You can just simply at the moment go for a nice casual run. You can also do training sessions which are built into the application. And in due course, and there's much more to come, there'll be events, you'll be able to do races. Uh, there'll be syncing it up with things like training peaks so your workouts will appear within the application but it looks absolutely amazing so I thought I'd jump on and have a quick go I mean honestly it's amazing it looks like I'm on something like Grand Theft Auto I mean the quality is exceptional what's interesting as well is if you have a nice powerful computer of course you can just run it from this computer but if like many people you're just using it straight off a tablet your TV, Apple TV, whatever it may be. You can actually just download the app and it's like cloud gaming. So all that definition, the information is sent from their servers and you'll just receive it on your computer. So actually it's really impressive, really simple, very accessible to everyone. I can't wait to see where this application goes. Well, what a day. We have barely left the first floor of one of the halls. I mean, there's still another 
four halls, I think, to get around and numerous other floors, other than obviously going to BMC. In fact, talking of which, I would love to hear from you guys and get your thoughts on that bike. Let us know in the comments section down below. With that, we've got so much more to still feature. So there's at least one, if not two more videos to come. So stay tuned. Loads more tech coming your way. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.